All right, today we're going to go ahead and look at solving two-step equations. So let's go ahead and look at the first example here. We're going to have 2x plus 3 equals 7. The reason these are called two-step equations is because we're going to have to do two mathematical operations in order to solve and find out what this value of this variable x is equal to. Uh, we need to keep in mind the order of operations when we're solving these equations with two-step because we're going to work backwards from the order of operations. So in this case, we have multiplication that's going on between the 2 and the x, and we have addition that's going on here with the 3. So when I work backwards, I'm going to look at subtraction and addition first, and I want to eliminate that. So I want to eliminate this plus 3. I eliminate plus 3 by doing the inverse of adding 3, which is subtracting 3. And because I know I need to keep balancing on equations, I'm going to subtract the other side by 3. When I have a plus 3 and a minus 3, I know that those cancel out. The remaining leaves a 2x over here. I have 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. I now have 2x equals 4. There's multiplication going on here. We've learned that in order to remove the multiplication in that 2, we need to do the inverse of that, which is dividing by 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to keep that balance. When I take 2 divided by 2, this gives me 1. And we know that identity property 1 times x gives me x. 4 divided by 2 will give me a solution of 2. So I have an answer of x equals 2. I can double check that like in the previous examples by substituting 2 in for the value of x. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation 2x plus 3 equals 7. Substituting a 2 in for x, I'm going to put that there. Please note that there is multiplication going on between the 2 and the parentheses 2. And now I go ahead and solve. I'm going to go ahead and solve and do 2 times 2 first because that's the order of operations say what to do. So I have 4 plus 3 equals 7, and 4 plus 3 is 7, and 7 is equal to 7, which lets me know that my correct solution of 2 is correct. All right. Let's look at our next example. Our next example is 25 is equal to 1 fourth n minus 3. Please notice a couple changes here. Uh, one being that the variable is now on the right side, uh, and now that we have a fraction. Okay. So again, just like before, we want to get rid of the subtraction and addition that's occurring in this two-step equation, so I want to get rid of the subtracting 3. I remove the subtracting 3 by doing the inverse of subtracting 3, which is adding 3. I do that to both sides again to keep that balance in that equation. This will cause this minus 3 to cancel out with the plus 3. We're going to leave the 1 fourth n. Equals 25 plus 3 is 28. We learned in the previous videos we have multiplication of a fraction here. In order to um, remove this 1 fourth with the n, I can simply multiply by the reciprocal of 1 fourth. Uh, and the reciprocal of 1 fourth is simply 4 over 1, also known as 4. Uh, I do that to the other side also. I'm just going to multiply by 4. This will cause this to cancel out. Leaves me with just n equals 4 times 28 is equal to 112. Again, I could double check that by substituting 112 back in for the variable of n. All right, we're at our last example, and this is one that typically will throw kids off, especially when they're trying to solve it. Our problem is going to be 6 minus 3x equals 21. The problem that we have with this is this minus 3x. Um, a lot of kids want to sit here and add 3 and to remove that 3, but because this 3 is associated with the x here because of the multiplication, um, this isn't necessarily a negative, this isn't a minus 3, this is actually, uh, we can treat this as a negative 3x, okay? So really what we need to look at is this 6 is what we need to remove. Uh, what I need to understand is look at the symbol in front of 6, and there is no symbol in front of 6, um, so as a result, I know this is a plus 6. So I need to get rid of that plus 6 by subtracting 6. I'm going to do that to both sides. This causes this to cancel out. Leaves me with just a negative 3x now. 
equals 21 minus 6, which is 15. Again, there's multiplication going on between this negative 3 and this x. So to undo multiplication, I do the inverse property, which is dividing. I am going to divide by this coefficient of negative 3 to both sides, again, to keep that balance going. When I take a negative 3 divided by a negative 3, I get a positive 1. 1 times x, we know, identity property tells me x. So I go over here to the right side, 15 divided by negative 3. A positive divided by a negative gives me a negative, and 15 divided by 3 gives me a solution of 5. So now my complete answer is x equals negative 5. Again, if I wanted to, I could double check by putting substituting negative 5 in for x, and I would find out that the left side is equal to 21 and lets me know that this negative 5 is the correct answer.